Hello and welcome to the Isto James Art Channel. I am Isto James and today we will be recreating this iconic image from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Now, if you have little to no experience painting, don't fret, because I will be showing you step by step on how to make this for yourself at home. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, let's talk supplies that we're gonna need to make this painting happen. Uh, I purposely chose to use level one or the, the beginner intro level paint sets. Uh, I go to Michael's, Blick Acrylic, sometimes I order things online as well. I found that this was my best deal for what we're gonna get accomplished today. It was just a multi-pack of level one paints by Craftsmart. Uh, you can get that at Michael's, it's a good choice. I chose these paints though because they have a matte finish. They're not very glossy. Uh, other paints that you get from places, beginner paints will be a little glossy. Uh, that's okay, you can totally do that. It's not gonna be a big issue at all, but I prefer to use these matte paints just for this particular painting because it has that kind of claymation or that stop motion uh, feel to it, I guess. Uh, the next thing you're gonna need is some paint brushes. You don't need a lot, usually maybe two, three, or four. Uh, if you've got a big one, this is gonna be really good so you can spread around your big colors. Uh, it really doesn't matter what it looks like. I prefer these one inch brushes, it's really good. I, if you get one that's just like that, a little bit smaller, this is great for straight lines and construction, getting into small detail things. And I also have small round brushes. These are my detail brushes. So I have one regular size one and one little bitty one. Uh, this is again, great for details. So as long as you have those three, somewhere in there, four brushes, you shouldn't need much else, nothing super fancy. Uh, clearly a cup of water, that will help a lot since we're using acrylics. And then uh, your palette. So I like to use these plastic ones you can also get at those craft stores because once you put your paint in here, if you have to step away from your painting for a period of time, you can cover it up with this and it keeps it wet so you don't have to add more paint later. If you don't have one of those, it's great. Paper plates work fantastic. These are easy to get, easy to obtain, and you'll that's all you'll need for that. So with all these colors, let me talk about the colors real fast. Here are the colors that we'll need. Uh, you'll need a light purple, a regular purple, and a blue. Not too hard to come across. We also need a brown, an orange, a yellow, and I use a cream here, ivory. Uh, if you don't have that, it's okay. White will be fine. Which brings me to the next set of paints is just white and black. So with those simple colors, we will be able to create this masterpiece going forward. And last but not least, our canvas. I am using a black canvas. You can order these at stores as well. If you don't have one, do not worry because you can just take a white canvas, paint it black. That's actually what I did with this one right here. If I flip it over, you can see my lines that I made. Nobody's gonna see the back when it's hanging up anyway, so I don't care. So black paint or black gesso, cover that thing up and then we can get started. All right, so as we get this video started up, I want you to remember that you can pause anytime you want. You can also fast forward. Please go at your own pace. You don't have to match me exactly here. So do what makes you feel comfortable. Let's do our first thing here. Uh, I did grab some chalk. I forgot to mention in the supplies thing, but if you have a piece of chalk, this is great. If not, just a normal pencil will work. I'm going to take this paper plate and trace my circle. This is gonna be my moon here. Uh, if, you're at home, if you're at home and you don't have a paper plate, you can use just a regular dish plate or pots, pans, the lids to the pots. Those will all make really good um, stencils for making perfect circles at this uh, size. So I'm just gonna trace it with my chalk or my pencil if you have that at home, just to get the moon in here. If you don't have a chalk or pencil, you could use paint. Just be a little careful around the edges as you do it. So I'm actually gonna start with some yellow first. I'm gonna do just the edges here. I'm gonna do my best to stay in the lines. Yellow is also, it's not a really opaque, super strong color. You're gonna see this black environment show through. That's okay for now. The white will help us out with that later. But what we're doing for now is just getting this yellow down all the way around the edges. 
You'll notice if you use chalk as well, you can, the chalk will just wipe away with the paint if you get close enough to that edge. So you don't even have to wipe away the chalk later yourself. And as we do this, just putting down the yellow, just trying to make the best edge I could do. Uh, I turn my brush also to the side. Instead of using it the big flat side, I change it so as I go around that edge, that it stays nice and thin and I can do that edge. And then now I go around the outside part of it. And as I do this outside edge, I'm just doing my best to fill it in, bring in those lines and those edges a little bit better. using some of this excess paint and kind of filling this in with a little bit of water just so to spread a little bit more again you're gonna see that you see all these brush strokes and there's some see-through parts this yellow is just not gonna be very good if we use only yellow but as I lay this all down I'm preparing it now we'll go in with the white or your ivory if you have some of that ivory and this is what's going to help cover up all that black background pretty easily. And I'm going to purposely mix it in with this yellow edge. This will add kind of a three dimensional aspect or three dimensional layer to it. But my main goal right now is just get some paint on here, mix this white and yellow as best I can. I shouldn't have to go too close to the edge for most of this since I prepped it that way. And I'm gonna mix this white in very subtly and I'm gonna cover up this black background as best I can. That's my goal at this point. Once I start adding the white, just get this three dimensional effect, mix this white and yellow together on the actual canvas. If you're not using the same style, the real goal that you want here is it's really bright in the middle, nice and white. And then as it gets closer to the edge of the moon, that's when you start seeing this yellow and these colors coming out. So I'm just gonna blend these until I think it looks what it should look like. You should do the same. Just blend it out until you're happy with the result. some yellow I want to put some more yellow I'm gonna put this white down first though I really want to cover up this black that's shining through I want this moon to be ultra bright I need to make sure that we know it's a light source and we just want to cover that up so this white is going to easily help us cover this darkness behind it and I'm gonna come back with some more yellow and do it around the edges. But for now, I wanna make sure all that black is covered up.
nice. Now we're getting that black covered up. And you can see it's definitely darker around the edges. There's some more yellow. And then it gets brighter and brighter as it goes inside. That's really the effect that we're looking for here. That's the important part. How fast it goes that way, it, it really there's no right or wrong with this. Do just what makes it feel comfortable for you. Again, the ultimate goal, just cover up that black background when we're working on the moon. So now I'm gonna clean my brushes, get that yellow off, because I'm gonna use some of these brushes to start the next side of our painting. So go ahead and use that water. Clean the brushes off as best you can. Wipe them off with a towel or paper towel, whatever you have handy. And then we're gonna get started on the background. So I'm gonna take just my purple I have my light purple, my purple and my dark blue all set out already. Just underneath the, the moon here, we're gonna create a horizon line as if you see some of the lights coming from the rest of the city behind it. Um, I did use the movie poster, the original movie poster that I found online as just a reference point and it had this as well. Um, but this is just gonna be some like fog or lights that you see behind everything going on, just some general city lights in the background. And so I'm gonna, just kind of spread this purple around pretty, I guess the word is lazy, sporadic. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to get some color showing behind these hills. This is going to help us add depth to our painting, but also put in a little bit of, of color and it's just going to help us out a lot. Uh, I'm grabbing the light purple now to mix it in with the regular purple, but I'm going to use this just closer to the bottom area. I'm just blending these paints just so it doesn't look like paint splattered, but I am just making big X's basically. If you just keep making a bunch of X's using your big brush or flat brush, you will have just kind of this light source. Pretend it's just all in the background and these are some mountains and hills we're gonna put in front of it. We are just gonna fill in, put some light in the night sky. So again, all I'm doing is mixing my purple, my blue, and my light purple all together. Uh, I'm using the lighter quartz colors or the brighter colors more towards the center and a little bit lower here. You should just have a line mixed uh, with some purple, blue, and some light purple. Again, no right or wrong there, just so it looks like we have something starting in the background. It looks like something crazy right now, but it will be worth it, I promise. Okay, so I'm gonna grab, grab my chalk again and we're gonna do our hill. So as I do this hill, I'm gonna look at my picture, but I'm gonna do a spiral. I don't know if it's any different for you guys, if you're right-handed or left-handed, all we're really doing is just a spiral through the moon. This will be the start of our hill. Now I'm not doing three dimensions yet. All I'm doing is just putting the curly part in. Now to do the dimensions, I'm gonna th go through and do a second line just right next to that same first starting point. And I'm gonna bring this back up. I'm just looking at my reference picture right now and I, I wanna make sure I get it pretty close. And the beauty of using this chalk right now is that 
I'm going to be able to erase anything that I need to before I fill it in with black paint. Again, you can do this with a pencil as well. Uh, I would just suggest trying to find something that's not paint right out of the, out of the gate, just so you have some workability there. Because once I do paint on this, that chalk will just blend away. The next part is we have the second hill where the pumpkins are sitting on it. I keep looking back at my reference picture to make sure I got my dimensions right, but there we go. You're gonna basically just do a little hill and at the top of that hill, from right to left, you're gonna have these fences that come over there too. So I'm gonna draw in this fence. I'm just doing everything with this chalk just so I can have something nice to go with because then you can erase it if you need to, like I had already said. But there we go, so we have a hill, we have our fence at the top. We do have kind of like a cobblestone base to it, so I'm gonna add that as well. And it's just outlines, it doesn't have to be perfect, just something that you can kind of get some visual before we add paint. horizon line looks a little not like how I want so I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to it just before I get started just so we can differentiate the the front hills because these are gonna be purple and blue too I want to be able to tell the difference between a hill and the sky in the background so I'm just gonna blend a little bit more light into this background let it fade out kind of naturally once my brush starts running out of paint I, let, I just keep going up until it runs out so I can kind of create this fade. Hmm, there's a lot of purple looking similar here at the bottom, so I want to fix that out. Really no right or wrong, just so it looks something like you guys can see lights in the sky. Hmm, yeah, I think that's close. So let's get in on the hill. I'm gonna mix just some blue and purple together just as a general base color and I'm gonna fill in this spiraled hill, the cemetery hill there that I did in chalk. So if you did use chalk then what should be happening right now is you're just filling in the blanks like it's a coloring book. Again I'm gonna turn my brush at an angle so that I don't use just the fat side. I'm gonna to try to turn it so I use the skinny side and I'm gonna follow these these chalk lines that I did the best I can. I'm not worried about detail right now. All I want to do is get this this blocking in, these, these colors laid down so I don't have to worry about chalk anymore. Part of this hill is going to be black. I know we need to fill this in first, but part of it will be black. So I'm, I'm going to keep looking at my reference photo just to make sure I'm close. Doesn't need to be exact, but okay. We got this, this smaller part. This is important. I guess got a smaller brush to do this inside swivel or this inside spiral. My big brush is definitely not gonna fit in there. So don't be scared to change your brushes either. If you need to make some adjustments, grab a smaller brush, it's totally fine. There's no, there's no rules or laws with this. So as I grab this smaller brush, I'm just gonna go back in. I'm going to fill in my chalk lines. I know it's probably hard to see that on the camera as well, the chalk when it's there, but on your own painting, you should be able to see the chalk just fine. And again, worst case scenario, if you don't have chalk or pencil, you can just go in here, be delicate with it, but you can go in here and make a spiral with your own paintbrush as well. Some of you might just be brave and say, screw it, I'm going in, and that's okay. So I'm going to just continue to fill this in with some black now, because we are gonna come back and do some highlights on the hill so that we know it has purples and blues, but we don't want the sun shining through the hill either. We want to cover that up. So grab some black and just fill it in.
always go around these edges as best I can to try to make sure they are filled in and they're complete. Uh, you don't need to follow my exact step by step here because I'm just being really finicky about what it should look like and how clean the line should be. So up to you as, that, as, as well in that aspect because if you're messy and you want to make it that way, go for it. Uh, if you're clean and neat, hey, pause the video and make your lines nice and clean and neat. It's up to you. <laughs> so for now, I'm just again filling this in and then we're gonna come back here in just a little bit and we're gonna do some purple and blue lining along this hill. There we go. Now this is kind of looking three dimensional, looking more like what I want it to look like. When we use the black in the center like that and the purple edges, again, just like with our moon, that creates some really cool dynamic uh, edges and gives us a three dimensional look. that black is down there I'm looking at this picture the reference again and I'm noticing there's still a lot of light coming through you can see a lot of this hill it's not entirely black like a lot of paintings you've seen it's probably entirely black but in the movie poster it's not so I'm gonna add this purple and that's all I'm doing I'm just using regular purple mixing in a little bit of dark blue here and there and I'm just adding some more color to this hill so that it's not entirely black I am sticking closer to my edges it will definitely be a lot darker in the middle because if you think about how light operates in real life, you might not see the very center of that hill or the hill might be casting its own shadow. Uh, there's a lot of things to think about, but if I stick true to the reference photo, I realize that there is some color here, but we're going to just leave it on the edges. So I'm gonna work on the other hill as well. We're gonna take just some normal purple Mix some blue as well. Again, we're not worried too much about detail here. We just want to color the edges of these hills so we see some good, nice color. Uh, on the left side of this bottom hill where these pumpkins are going to be, there's not going to be as much color. So I'm just doing a slow fade. But anywhere where there's chalk, I'm definitely going to put some color down there. So like with this hill with the pumpkins from right to left, it's gonna be really bright with this purple. I'm gonna add that in. And then towards the bottom left of that hill, you're not gonna see much more of it. Now I'm gonna add in this cobblestone fence post or base that they have. I'm really just gonna take some purple and blue, put it, just kind of mash it up, and I'm just gonna make dots all the way around this. If you want, you can stack them kind of like in a brick, brick shape where they, they alternate on each level. We really, you can get away with this to, by just putting these dots in here and letting the black of the canvas operate as if it's a shadow. So they're just putting dots that already looks like a fence and we're not gonna have to add too much detail to that. Now when we do the fence line, I'm going to take my bright purple and I'm just gonna run that bright purple down the length of this fence. Again, I'm turning my brush so that I'm not using the fat side, but I'm using the skinny side of it. And I'm just putting purple where I feel that the moon would definitely light up from its position. We're gonna come back here and do details later. So I'm not worried too much about details now. I just want to get these base colors in. So I'll fill in the rest of this cobblestone just to make sure that they're nice and full colors on there. And then I'm going to go over my fence line again with some more purple. Just so I have that in there and I don't have to worry about the chalk anymore because my paint will actually be laid down.
So now, yeah, we should put in some highlights. Now that I have this light purple on the brush, I'm just gonna kind of go around and monitor parts of this. Uh, when they made this ground in the movie, I'm pretty sure that they used um, a fork to scour, or put some slip into it to give this clay texture. And that's what I'm gonna do, just kind of try to model that same effect. Not to a T, I am do. I am adding my own kind of artistic creation to it. But as I do this, I'm thinking about how did they put those fork marks in the clay and how can I just kind of capture the, that element a little bit. So I'm just filling in where I feel the light would hit better. Now we're semi-focusing on details, not just the black because now that black is dry. So I'm gonna go around all the edges of the hill, of the fence, and we're going to put our highlights here. I'm sticking highlights with these edges because the moon, you would definitely, the, well, the moon would light up these edges really well, more so than the center of the hill. So I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna lay some groundwork because we're gonna put some yellow on top of this too, as if the yellow moon was shining off the ground literally. And laying this bright purple down helps lay the groundwork for that just so we can see that lighting effect work for us later. Again, I'm doing those short strokes because I want to imitate a little bit of those fork scouring marks. So I'm just doing some dashes and stuff. But I'm just going to go around and it's up to you how you want to do this, but you want to capture all the edges of these hill of this hill with a little bit of color. That's going to help with our dynamic three dimensional look. This is also not gonna be a perfect color all the way around. Well, that's not necessarily true. Just focus on the edges with your color. Still taking this light purple. If you don't feel like your light purple is light enough, you can always add a little bit of white to it as well. If you only have regular purple, if you were to just mix a little bit of that white into it, you'll get this nice color and it'll stay in the same, same realm. And I'm so sorry, but I gotta do this background while I have this light purple here. I know that there's more light shining in this background, so I'm just gonna add this to my background while I'm here holding my light purple. Not something you necessarily have to do if you're already happy with your background. Enjoy. But again, as I get through this, sometimes I get OCD or sidetracked and go, oh, I need to fix this. That does happen every now and then. So I'm gonna keep working on this background a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so let's go back to our hill. Let's do our edges still. Again, my fork marks, that's what I'm emulating here just to give that hill some texture. I've noticed in my reference photo that this bottom here, there's gonna be a, some gravestones or some headstones that we're doing in a minute, so. I just wanted to add some more texture down on that bottom and prep it so when we get to those gravestone there will still be some depth. And now we are continuing to add this light purple to all of our edges here where we know that that moon's hitting. These are the brightest parts that I'm seeing in this reference picture is, is right here. So even though it's a purple hill, we can't just make it purple. Or if it's a blue hill, you can't just make it blue. There's gonna be lots of different shades and dynamics that happen with it. And that's usually how I build up my paintings. I'll start with a basic color and then we'll come back and do these brighter colors and add to it. So I'm gonna add a little bit of more bright things on the cobblestone part, a little bit of things on the hill. Just think of where the moon would might be shining brightest and put some light purple there. 
Now, I'm going a little ahead of myself because I don't normally do black until the end of these paintings, but I want to make sure my fence has the right shape. So what I'm going to do now, just so it doesn't look like purple lines or like a weird train train rail uh, track rails going around, I want to kind of make this look like, okay, we have a fence post. So all I did was take a thin brush with some black paint and I'm just going to go through and I'm going to now think of where the light would not hit. Where would the shadows be in a three dimensional world? So I've decided that it'll definitely go on the left side and the bottom side of any of these lines. That's so what I mean by that is if you have a fence, fence post right in front of you like this, I'm going to do just the left side of that fence post and the bottom side. And this is going to give us that 3D look. We have more depth and, and character in our fence now. Now I'm doing the same thing with the, the rocks or the stones that are in the base of the fence here. I'm just thinking again, where do these shadows go? What parts of this would the moonlight not really reach? And it's just kind of, I'm separating those stones, adding a little bit of shadow to the stones. Just putting black where I think, okay, the moonlight, just not gonna hit this part of the picture. Boop, boop, boop. There you go. Since I'm working with black, I can probably add a little bit more black spots where I see fit, like on the hill. I'm gonna accent more of these fork kind of scraping textures in the hill. Now, if you wanna take hours and hours and do it and make it exactly like the reference photo, more power to you. Uh, I do wanna take some artistic creativity and I also don't wanna take up all day. So I'm just gonna do some quick lines, some gashes just to give it that texture. And it's gonna go on both hills. So I'm just kind of playing around with it just a little bit. And you can do the same, just make it look like how you would like it to look. You can go super detailed or you, if you like it as it is without having those, those fork marks in there, you can do it without it. some shadows on this back hill too so there's really no rhyme or reason to how I'm putting this down I'm just kind of making squigglies on that back hill just to darken up darken it up just a little bit Now that hill is just gonna perpetually bother me until I get the textures and tones right. Yours is probably fine. I'm just going back through and adding just a little bit more color to the hill and, and cleaning up the lines and the edges a little bit. I do this with a lot of my paintings. Uh, I'll go back and forth with certain spots. If I'm working with a color and I realize there's a different section of the painting that needs work, I'll go ahead and work on it and it'll be okay. You can do the same too. If you see something that you want to fix or work on, you don't have to lock yourself into one section. I mean, it is easier to try to knock everything out at once, but I like using different colors. Okay, so the background looks, or the, the main setting looks like how I want it to. What we're really gonna jump into now is pumpkins. How do we get this in here? Remember when I said earlier that yellows they don't cover up blacks very well. So what we have to do is put down a primer layer for all of our pumpkins. Uh, I am doing my best to make this as close to the movie poster as possible. So I am gonna do my best to copy each pumpkin as it is on the poster. If you don't want to, you don't have to, you can just put down these white things and make your own pumpkins. That's always fun too. But I'm gonna try to recreate the original poster as best as possible. So when we get these pumpkins in, it's so much better just to put down a white layer of paint because if you came in and just tried to put down yellow or orange on top of this, these dark colors, uh, it would not be very bright at all and you could see through them. And we don't want that. We really want these pumpkins to stand out and, and look great. So I'm gonna show you a few tricks with that. But the most important part is let's 
get all the white down wherever there is going to be a pumpkin. And you want to fill that in as best as possible. There's a nice little pumpkin sitting on the fence here. There's a couple of them actually. So I'm gonna paint right over the fence, no big deal because if this was real life, you wouldn't see that fence post either. There's a few pumpkins back on the back hill. I'm not gonna be able to copy those very well because of how tiny they're gonna be, but I wanna make sure that we see that they're there. So we still gotta put this white background in the back wherever there's gonna be a pumpkin. So once we, and you'll see how this pays off later. Once we put that orange and those yellows on, on this white, those pumpkins shine so much better. They, they show through so much better. So this is a crucial, crucial step if you wanna make these pumpkins look correct. Jack. We can't go in for these white pumpkins quite yet. I want that white part to dry completely. I don't want to mix the yellows and oranges with the white. I want that white to just be a very solid background. So let's go on Jack. I'm gonna literally just paint a stick figure. I've had people tell me in all the years that I've taught paintings that they're like, oh, I can't paint to save my life. I can't even do a proper stick figure. Well, this is your chance to do a good job and do a proper stick figure. I am literally just doing a stick figure person and I'm copying this image, my reference photo as best as I can. I'm gonna come in here with a thin, thin black, or thin, thin brush, but with some black paint. If you put some water in the paint, this will help you in this step so you don't do anything crazy. Uh, what I mean by that is if you add a little bit of water, make sure your brush is wet. Uh, you can even mix some water in with your black paint. But if you do that, you have more of an inky type substance rather than just thick paint. And this, this, as long as it's a little bit watery, will come right off of your brush. Really simple. So when you do these lines and fill in this stick figure, that paint just comes right off. It doesn't come become powdery. It doesn't run out as you're doing your lines. And then you'll get a perfect stick figure man here, which is what we're going for. He does have some coattails, so I gotta add that part to it as well. But you'll notice I haven't gone back for paint in a while, and that's because I mixed that water in with this black. So crucial, crucial, important step as well. Please make sure your brush is wet. If not, put some water into the black brush and mix it around really good so there's a lot of paint on that bristle. And then as you make these shapes coming through, simple, simple, pure black lines, and just to thicken it up, I'm going over it twice. But as you can see, it's literally just a stick figure person. And we're gonna leave it that way. We're gonna cheat a little bit. He does have that bat bow tie. Um, and when we do the middle body, I wanna, meet, I wanna leave kind of a triangle shape or a V towards the top of that body. Just so we can see it looks like he's wearing a coat there. But it's funny how something that simple, just if you have little tricks like that, 
then your stick figure looks like a full-on three-dimensional character. All right, now let's put his head in here. I'm gonna take some white with that same brush that we're using after I've cleaned it off. Now with the white, I'm gonna put a circle at, at the top just to make his head. I'm gonna do five little lines. I'm not even, I don't even need to be an expert at hand shapes at this moment, so you don't need to be either, where you just do five little lines to show off where his fingers are. Again, especially since it's in the middle of this moon, it's gonna be hard to see his hands anyway, so use your own discretion as, as best you see fit. didn't really tell you how I did his, his bow tie there, that, that's a bat. All I did was at the, the top of that, the, the shoulder blades, or where his shoulders would be, I did just a dot. And then I did three little lines spreading out to be the wings. And now I'm gonna go in and do his head. I have my tiniest detail brush. And I'm just gonna put a circle for his eyeball towards the top of that circle. And then I'm gonna do a smile, which is just like a half circle right across the bottom of that circle. So this part doesn't need to be ultra detailed. It's really not the focus of the painting in my eyes. I feel that the hill, the hill and the pumpkins kind of have the lasting effect. All right, these pumpkins should be dry now. So I'm gonna go through with some brown, believe it or not. I'm gonna build this up from darker colors to lighter colors. We are gonna go back and forth between light and dark colors, but here's the big secret for this. Since we got this white part down, you're going to put, just like the hill, the back lower half, the furthest corner away from that moon will be a little bit darker and those, those orange and yellow highlights will pop out later. So what I'm doing is just putting down some basic brown into my pumpkins and I'm kind of trying to capture those pumpkin lines. We all know that pumpkins have ridges and lines. And what I'm doing here is looking at my reference photo and just trying to copy lines as best I can. It's not gonna be exact. I am gonna rush some of this just because I'm showing you guys how to do it. But as we do this, I'm, I'm laying down my darker tones first and then I will be laying uh, the lighter colors such as orange and yellows a little bit later. So I'm just going to add depth. This is so crucial in making these pumpkins look good because we want, once we get the faces on here, they're lit up like with candles, that part needs to be really bright. So our pumpkin itself is actually gonna be kind of dark. And that's how we create a really good contrast to make it look like it's light, lit up. If you were to go in with just orange and orange only, yeah, it would look like a pumpkin, it looked pretty good, but as soon as you put the pumpkin face on there, um, it'd be hard to tell if it's lit up or if the pumpkin's as just as bright as the candle light is coming through. So my goal in creating these pumpkins and to make them look as good as possible, let's get some dark colors in there, and that includes this brown. And uh, I'm just looking at my reference photo to find out where those darker shades will be. And then we'll come back and you'll see these empty white spots left over. Those will be brighter for our orange when we get to it. But for now, let's put in our dark shapes. some dark brown here looking good Ooh, this back pumpkin over on this fence is almost all dark so I'm gonna go a lot of dark there so the one thing we're focusing on is just the, sh the color of the pumpkin we're not thinking about faces yet we're not thinking about highlights we just kind of want to fill in all these brown spots where we see shadows
lot of shadows on these ones in the background, so uh, I'm, I'm just being carefree with those, just kind of filling it in a little bit. Now we take our orange, and we're gonna add some orange. Now orange will pop really good with this white, so it's easy to get carried away. We don't wanna completely cover up this brown we did either. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna kind of play a dance. We're gonna do a dance with these shades here to just get the right amount of orange and shadow. So what I'm gonna do is cover up a lot of this because since that orange is a little bit see-through, this brown you'll still see coming through, but we don't want to cover up the brown completely. What we want to start doing is creating a, a, a feeling of a three-dimensional shape. So now our goal is we do want to cover up the white, but we don't want to cover up all the brown. I know it sounds so redundant, but you'll see as you're painting, you're going to see pretty easily what I mean. This orange will not completely cover up the brown. If it, if it does, you're either using way, way too much paint or you got a really good, you're using something that's higher than level one or beginner artist paints. But as we put this orange in, we should really start to see different shades. We should see the orange. We should see some of the brown coming through the orange. And uh, you might have to do a little dance with it. You might not get it right on the very first try, and that's okay. I didn't. I know that I can already see one of my pumpkins that I've already messed up. So I'm gonna be trying to fix one of those a little bit later. But right now, the important part is we don't see any black from the original canvas coming through. And we're starting to see some three dimensions coming out. And as long as we keep it dark like this, once we put these faces on here, those faces will really, really glow. And there's a trick for that too I'm about to show you. Now I grabbed a little bit of yellow, and I'm again using my reference photo, but more to the top right edge of these, these pumpkins, we're gonna see a lot of this yellow and orange kind of thing standing out. So I'm actually mixing orange and yellow together. Let's add a little bit of white, why not? We, we're just looking for some bright, uh, a brighter orange color to add highlights to our pumpkin here now that we have our shadows laid in. So I'm using my reference photo, but I am thinking about how the moonlight would work. The, the yellow is only gonna hit a certain edge of this pumpkin. It's not gonna cover the whole thing. So we're just adding little highlights where we see fit. to the top right edge. Some of these, like this one right here, mm, it doesn't have that much yellow. It really doesn't. So I'm gonna mix it in with that orange. I'm gonna call that one good. doing these highlights too I'm trying to think of how these ridges on these pumpkins actually would be so as I paint these in I'm not painting full the whole pumpkin I'm just thinking of these little ridges that are showing through through the moonlight Again, this is gonna be a dance. You can go back and forth, find really just the shadows where the pumpkin should be. Generally towards the bottom left is a good rule of thumb in this picture if you don't have a reference. 
and then we're going to add oranges and yellows as highlights to part of this as if the moon was lighting up those sections so it's really just a game back and forth to find the right thing the one goal we don't want is for these pumpkins to be too bright they knew they do need to be kind of dull we want to see the orange and stuff in them but i'm going to focus on getting these browns and oranges in here to make sure we have shadows so that's what i'm doing now is i'm just going through and making sure that we have some shadow in there i grabbed some just regular brown and I'm keeping it so it looks orange, but just having a nice subtle brown to add to the shadow of the, of the pumpkins. In fact, later on, we will probably even come back and do some black once we get everything done, just because I've seen a lot of black in these references, but I want to have these shadows in here. grabbing my brown finding where all the shadows are now that I got my basic orange color in there we're just finding our shadows we're adding to the ridges or at least the valleys of the ridges uh, some of these are even dark enough we could even do the pumpkin stems if you have a little bit of black too you could do the pumpkin stems like this pumpkin right here I'm working on now uh, it's really dark in the original photo, so ugh, I don't know if I should do black quite yet, but I know that that's going to be a generally dark pumpkin itself. Just using browns and stuff. Okay, I think it looks good. Let's put some faces on these bad boys. So what I'm going to do is grab just some plain white, um, and I'm going to draw in these faces with just white paint. I'm doing the same trick I told you earlier, where I thin out the paint a little bit with water, just so it's it's there's a lot of it and it's kind of liquidy on my brush rather than a big clump of paint. We do want it to be kind of liquid, liquidy. So make sure you're using a wet wet paintbrush or you're mixing some white or white water into your white paint, um, and then go back and I'll, all I'm doing is filling in what these faces look like. So again, I'm using my reference photo. And I'm drawing pumpkin faces. You don't have to make them exactly. You could have fun with it too. Again, I'm trying to stay as close as I can to the original portrait, the original picture. But have fun with it if you want to. You can draw your own faces. I'm using this white, same principle, because we're gonna come back and add some yellow into this to really make it light up. But the only way to make it look that bright is to lay down our white first. I'm gonna let you guys paint that and I'm not gonna talk for a minute. And you can just watch how these faces really start to come to life. If you use just a little bit of white paint.
So as I'm putting these white lights for all the faces, um, a little tip that I'm doing for the mouth at least is I'm just drawing the outline first and then filling in the white. There's so many different ways that you can do this. Just do something that's comfortable for you. Um, but as I work on this far right pumpkin here, you can see that I'm just gonna do the outline first with my thin detail brush. Make sure I get those teeth marks in there. And I'm going back for more paint because again, the, even though there's water in here, we want to keep sure or we want to make sure that it's still wet and the paint comes off of our brush really smooth. Um, so now I do the bottom part of this mouth and some of it will line up. But essentially, I'm just kind of doing an outline to make sure that the teeth show and then I fill in the whole middle part. Cool. See how easy that pops out. Now we have some really wicked looking pumpkins with some nasty teeth. This is this is honestly one of my more favorite parts of doing paintings like this is lighting sources. Now we are going to come back and do yellow across these white parts. You could leave it white if you want. Really up to you. It's a personal choice. Um, but yeah, we'll just keep going. Keep making some faces. Have some fun with it. And I'll talk to you in a sec. Now on these back pumpkins, I'm actually pretty impressed with how small you have to go with this, I guess. I don't know if that's the right terminology or the right phrase, but when we get to these further away pumpkins, or these farther away pumpkins, um, I have these, this small detail brush is gonna help you a lot, but even though I have some of the smallest detail brush you can find, it still might be a little too big for some of these faces. So when I get in here, I'm just gonna do almost like emoji faces, kind of like little just smiley faces, you know, a dot dot for the eyes and a smiley face. And that should do the trick. I will make the smiley a little bit squiggly just to give it more effect, but I'm not going to focus too much on the details of these guys back here. I'm just going to pop, pop, dot, dot, smiley face. Looks fantastic. Love it. put some yellow in here just as I was saying I mixed a little bit of yellow and a little bit of orange just to, to kind of get the color that I was looking for it looks should look like a glowing yellow like there's some candles in there shoot you could just have put red in there if you want and really have fun but I like this traditional look of candles going uh, you also notice that I'm doing some of the edges just as I mentioned earlier, when I'm working with a color or have something I'm already working with, I don't necessarily stick to that one item or shape. Maybe I found some use for this yellow elsewhere. And I did right now. I'm going to do just some highlights on the pumpkin on the head or just the side of it as well while I'm working with this yellow. Well, my ultimate goal here is just 
All that white that I just put down, we're gonna fill it in with some yellow. And man, you can tell that these pumpkins are really starting to stand out and really pop. I usually work with little daubs of paint because acrylic dries out so fast. I, I can always get more, but I don't want to waste either. I'm a little OCD with that stuff. Yeah, I'm going to come back and redo this pumpkin. He is not looking... Now, this guy I'm working on right now looks great. The one right before it, we're probably going to end up redoing that. So I'm glad I did that so I can show you how to redo those here in just a minute. But let me finish up this yellow... And just like that, we got some glowing face pumpkins. Pretty cool. This is my favorite part of any kind of painting. Ooh, yeah, we're going to redo this guy too. I'm just going to choop, 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 just call it, cover him up with white and yellow as it is. He did not look the way I wanted. So we're going to redo a couple of these. I'm going to let that dry. I'll go add some more yellow on the guys in the background here. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And now my dog is begging for my attention. He must want to go play. We'll go play in a little bit. Okay, so I grabbed some orange. And I'm just putting this kind of on the sides. I'm just doing this to add a little bit of texture, tonality to the, the light that's coming out of there. So it's not a solid yellow. And this guy right here, I'm definitely gonna redo. So let's just paint that all in orange. I'll probably come back with some browns and shit. We're gonna redo him. So I'm gonna add these orange white highlights. Yep. We are almost done. There is some, this is the important part. We need to add, continue adding our shadows. This yellow is not popping as much as I would like it to and I'm looking at the reference photo and I noticed that I definitely need to put some darker shadows in here. So I'm doing a mixture of brown and black and I'm looking at my reference picture and all those curves and edges and the stem, they're all gonna benefit from this. So the darker that we go with these pumpkins, the more these lights gonna pop. And I'm not even going as dark as the original photo here because the pumpkin at the bottom left is almost entirely in black. But I don't want to go that far. I do want to have some texture here. So I'm going to go through these bottom left sides of these pumpkins. We're going to add some, some dark brown mixture to these. Now I'm only doing it as a shadow. I'm not going to cover the whole pumpkins like this, obviously. But if we do just the bottom left and some of these inside ridges, it's really gonna add that extra layer of dyn... Excuse me, that's really gonna add the extra dynamic layer to make these pumpkins look really good. Now this one's the tricky one. It's gonna be almost all black. So I'm just gonna go through here, just highlight some of the teeth, maybe go around the eye parts. And you'll notice that this just makes that yellow from the light coming inside the pumpkin pop out just a little more. When we work with details, you don't want to overdo it. These should always be subtle, whether it's shadow or light that we're working with. These are just to add more that, like I said, that dynamic edge to these paintings. So we're not going full black, but we definitely have a dark brown happening and I'm only doing like the bottom edges. And again, always refer to your reference photo. It's not cheating to look at a photo. This is iconic, iconic movie poster. So anybody watching this has definitely seen this. If you, even if you haven't seen the movie, you've definitely seen this image. So I wanna try to stick true to it. 
Just a little bit darker over here on the front pumpkin's face. And he is looking good. There we go. So I'm adding some of these ridges as I paint in. I'm not just smushing the brown around. I'm sticking with how the, the curves in nature would actually go in real life. So I'm doing up and down strokes to try to match those ridges. This is gonna help you get that more realistic kind of vibe, even though it is cartoony. And again, just kind of the bottom left side of these circles should shade these pumpkins just right. So I'm gonna let you guys paint. I'm gonna do some of these details and I'll holler at you once we have something more important to talk about. So I'm playing with this guy. I'm trying to see if I can save him. Uh, I really, I didn't do a good job on this particular one. I really don't think we can save him. So I'm gonna take a break from the pumpkins and well, let's just get this, uh, I'm gonna put some orange down there just to kind of primer that. Perfect, okay, I'm gonna let that dry because we're gonna have to redo those two pumpkins. I'm gonna go focus on the hill here for a moment. Yeah, I'm grabbing the wrong brush. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm gonna use just this smaller flat brush. I'm grabbing some light purple. I'm gonna go through, since this part is dry, I'm going to add the highlights of the hill. Uh, I'm gonna put some yellow on here so it looks like yellow from the moon is actually shining onto the hill. But as we've learned from that yellow before is we need to kind of primer it, give it a lighter surface to work with. So everywhere that I'm putting this bright purple right now, I'm gonna add some yellow to it um, in the future here. And we're gonna really make this scene come to life when we're ready. All right, pumpkin should be dry now. I'm gonna go through, finish up some of my details. I apologize, I'm all over the place, but sometimes the things just look the way they should and in the moment I gotta fix it. So it's okay to fix little details here and there. There we go. So this lighter brown and this orange, I'm going through again just to make sure that these yellow parts from the face pop out. So the darker it is around the light, the more the light will shine through. If we used just orange, again, you would see the yellow and orange, but there wouldn't be very much contrast. So this really helps with the contrast, working with the shadows and working with our highlights. Okay, so let's take a stab at this pumpkin again. I do got the shadows in there, which is good, but we're gonna put some orange down here. So that's the easiest thing to do when you mess up. If you mess up, you can just reprimer it. When I did this, I wanted to make sure the shadows lined up and we got some orange in there, we're good. But now I'm gonna come back through and I'm gonna put these shadows back in the way that I, they sh 
that I feel that they should be. And as I do this, I'm not thinking about the face yet. I'm just thinking about capturing the right tonality for these pumpkins. So especially the one on the fence here that I'm working on, it needs to be darker towards the bottom of the pumpkin, closer to the, to the fence, because moonlight just wouldn't get across that side. It hits the top of it and the right side, at least from this perspective, but that moonlight won't be getting down to the bottom. So I needed to add more shadow here to this uh, pumpkin that's sitting on the fence. And again, while I have this color, I'm looking at any of my other pumpkins to see if maybe I could use that color still. So that back and forth process helps if you, if you know which colors you're grabbing for. There we go. This pumpkin's starting to look better. This is what it's supposed to look like, at least in my opinion. <clears throat> okay, well, I got this shadow, just kind of adding a little more shadow and highlights here. Excuse me, did I say shadow? I meant highlights. Since I'm working with some of this yellow and orange, it's pretty bright. I'm thinking, yeah, this main pumpkin in the middle needs a little bit of brightness on the edge here. That looks pretty good, but I might have to come back and do shadows again. So the back and forth game continues. But hopefully for you on your painting that you're working on, you're finding the right mixture and colors that you want. And while I'm waiting for that to dry before I do my next spot, I'm gonna go ahead and just put some more shadows on these back pumpkins. Now, you see me rolling that just now? That's again, I'm putting water into the paint and rolling my paintbrush into it so that I have this really nice liquid ink-like black paint to work with. And I'm using my smallest detail brush and I'm just putting in the shadows just underneath those uh, emoji smiles, as I said. <laughs> just kind of capturing the back left sections of these pumpkins. They're the bottom left, excuse me. So this is funny with the pumpkins back there, they're almost all black minus the, the faces that I put on them. But just around the edges, especially on the top right, you're gonna see some orange and yellow. And that kind of tricks the mind into thinking that that whole pumpkin is actually orange, which it should be. But it's amazing how you can make an almost entirely black and yellow object and have, have it look like it's orange. And that's the goal where we're going here. Um, while I have this black, I am doing just a few small subtle details on the front pumpkins here. Maybe I need a little bit more brown. And I'm just gonna outline the eyes and the nose, all the parts that have that yellow light coming out. I'm gonna darken the edges up just a little bit more. And like I said, doing that is really gonna help that yellow candlelight really pop out. So I'm just being kind of a neat freak here, but I'm going through with darker shadows. Wow, what a difference. So you can almost see this pumpkin that's the second up from the left. You don't see a lot of definition in him because he's really just a, a lot of orange and the yellow. But these other pumpkins around him, they're mostly brown. And 
I think there's just better details in some of these ones. Look at that. It's almost all brown, but your mind seeing the edges of the orange lets you know, hey, I'm a pumpkin. And now that yellow light's popping out. I love it. This, yeah, this is my favorite part. Just lining it with brown. Well, it's a mixture of brown and black, but put these dark tones in there. Yes, okay, so let's fix this guy I was talking about. He needs a little bit more shadow love here. There we go. So I hope you did notice, he was originally just a lot of orange. There wasn't a lot of shading in on this one. It is pretty bright in the original photo, but I'm adding that shadow just to make it look great. Yep, yeah, just simply kind of just going around the edges of the bright. I'm not completely redoing the shadows or anything. I'm just going through and lining just the edges of where this light would be. Well, the light coming out of the pumpkin would be. And let's give him some shadows on the hill too. Doop, doop, doop. So I'm just taking a little bit of that same black and brown mixture and just right below the pumpkin. I don't believe moonlight would make it there either. So let's put, let's give these pumpkins some shadows. Now we really have some three dimensional things. So when you add a shadow, just like on the pumpkin, the bottom lower half and just slightly off to the left, I think, depending on this light source that we're working with, is the ideal place to put that. And I gotta get more shadows on this top pumpkin as well. Please remember, this is a video. You can pause, you can fast forward, whatever helps you get through this. I'm gonna continue to just work on some shadows here. This is my favorite part of the whole painting, so I do take a little bit longer just for myself. There is no right or wrong as far as time length, but I don't wanna spend all day here while I'm trying to teach you guys. So we're about to finish up these pumpkins. I'm gonna finish up this, uh, these mess up guys real quick. So I'm following that same process. Now that I got their shadows in, I can boom, 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 put the face back in with the pure white. You wanna make sure that it's dry before you do this. That's why I was kind of stalling for time a little bit there. So now that this pumpkin is dry though, I don't want it to mix. I want to actually cover up the, the color with this white and not mix with it. So now we can see a much better shaped face and the tonalities of the shadows are now appropriate from what they were before. And I'm gonna do this with the pumpkins on the fence as well. in the eyes he's kind of facing downward a little bit so the eyes will be a little bit lower this guy needs a tune-up there we go and now that that white has been placed down Let's make, sorry, I just noticed something as I'm working with white. I would really love these eyes to be a little bit brighter. So I'm just adding a little bit of white 
on top of it. I'm hoping that this just captures a little bit more depth and character, makes it look really bright. Now I'm not covering up the whole thing, I'm just doing a little bit of white in the edges. I kind of imagine that where the candle would be sitting inside of those things. And I'll make this white just go really, really close to wherever I think the flame is. This just, again, adds a little bit more dynamic to that light coming out. So if you do decide to do this step and put a little bit of white in here, do it just as little highlights. We don't wanna cover up that yellow, that nice yellow we put down. I'm just doing little, little bit of the edges in each of the corners there, just to make it look like it has that extra glow. Yeah, oh man, that looks great. These things look like they actually have candles inside of them. Oh boy, okay, I might have to come back and redo this bottom left guy. I might have went a little too far. And that does happen with paintings. If you, you might not uh, get the, the result you want right away, but that's the beauty thing, of, of, <laughs> excuse me. That is the beautiful thing about working with acrylics or paints in general. We can cover it right up and start over again. So I do a back and forth game with, like I have said, until it, looks the way that I really want it to look. I hope you're having as much fun with the details that I do in these parts of the paintings. But yeah, it looks like we are gonna have to just play with it a little bit more. about these grave uh, head they're the, the headstones for these graves if you look at the original picture you got kind of one with a little cross and then another one um, I originally wasn't gonna add this but I did say that I wanted this to really look like the original movie poster so I'm putting it in here the first thing I'm doing is just outlining this cross in all black and I'm just freehanding it you can use your chalk if you want to um, it's always a good idea because if you mess up, you can always start over again without actually painting. Uh, I'm going to go in just straight with just black here. And I'm, I'm making a cross and I'm doing my best to make it look like what you see in the actual reference photo. Now this one's going to be hard because I'm using all black and this is a black background right here. But I'm just going to try to capture at least the, the general shape of this one. And I'm gonna go quick, because once this black dries, you can kind of see it now, but when it when it dries, it might disappear. So chalk's a good idea. But I'm not gonna spend too much time on these. I'm gonna do the same principle as the pumpkins. I'm gonna just outline some purple here. Or I'm gonna outline the, the headstones with purple where I think the light would hit. So I'm doing the top edge of these. And, um, a little bit of the right side because the left side, as you know, is the darker shadowy side. So I'm looking more for just capturing a slight cross shape here, just doing a couple of the highlights right on the edge. I'm using this dark purple first and then this light purple as if where the moon would really hit it really bright. 
And I'm just trying to capture kind of a 3D shape as well. So as I add this, I'm just gonna do a couple of lines, basically outline the whole thing, but put extra purple on just some of the edges, as you can see. And boom, there, there's kind of a cross. I'm not gonna put too much more effort into that. Maybe I'll come back a little bit and but that's, that's essentially how easy this should be. This one's kind of got an oval top to it with more of the cross shape inside, or like a star pattern. I, again, I'm just taking this purple and I'm just outlining the edge of what I see as far as the tombstone or the headstone. And it, that's basic right there. We're pretty much... I'm not gonna focus too much. I don't think that's a focus point of this painting. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And I forgot this fence back here. There is a fence. Uh, as I was looking at this gravestone, I realized I was missing a little bit of this fence. So I just took some black, made sure there was a little bit of water in there and I'm gonna make a fence. Now we gotta put some highlights on that fence too can't just be a black fence so a little bit of bright purple you can mix anything you want purple blue bright purple but just get some highlights on the top of that fence there we go that looks pretty good these are simple things that we don't need to overthink um, sometimes less is more in these situations and I find myself constantly in a position of overworking things, doing too much when just a little bit will suffice. So with the gravestones or the headstones and that, that fence, I think it turned out pretty good and I didn't do much other than just highlight some of those edges. I hope it's just as easy for you. If not, practice, 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 practice. Practice always makes better. And now I'm just being picky and finicky with how this light looks. I just want to capture it right. There's really no great rhyme or reason why I'm doing this other than it, I just want to make it look more satisfying to my own eye.
Okay, so I think we're only missing one thing left, and that is the glow on the hill from the moon. So in that previous spot where I put those light purples, we are now gonna go in and I'm gonna mix white and yellow together. Yes, and now we have this bright yellow color hitting the ground or the hill to really put this hill into place and make it look like it belongs in this picture and that it's working with the light just like everything else. Now what I'm doing is naturally red letting this paint run off my brush as I get closer and closer to the center of the hill. And I'm purposely letting it spread out and be thin like that. So unlike how we did the black lines and mixed a lot of water into it. In this case, I almost want it to be dry and use a dry brushing technique to just add these yellow parts and really just make this hill blend in together with the rest of the painting. There we go, and you can be sloppy with it. Um, sometimes again, like I said, less is more. So we're just adding some yellow to the hills, yellow highlights to the fence. We've got some yellow highlights on the front hill here. Yes, and now it looks like it's glowing with the moon. When you're dealing with highlights though, like with this, especially with lighting, less is more. You don't want to get too carried away and turn this hill into a yellow hill. You really just want to capture the edges and just some of the, the places where the, the moon would be extra bright and really light up those edges. And that's all we're talking about. I'm not going to take this yellow and put it down the center of the hill. I'm not going to really paint anywhere there where I feel that there should be a shadow. We're really just accenting our highlights here. Doop, 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 just like that. Ooh, here's, uh, here's some bonus material for those of you who really wanna follow along. I'm gonna fill in Jack here for a second, but we're gonna, we're gonna add some vines as well. I'm just cleaning up Jack here, I'm just blah, 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 blah. I'm already thinking about it. I know we're gonna do these vines. It's gonna be really cool. It'll be our final touch. So I'm just re-solidifying Jack here, just making sure his lines are nice and dark so that he stands out against that moonlight. I'm gonna redo his fingers here to just make sure that those stand out and thick. Again, I'm just doing five little lines. I'm not even painting a hand. I'm just doing five lines going straight into his sleeve here. And you can still see some chalk left over from when I drew him earlier. That's okay, because once this drawing is, or this painting is completely dry, you can always come back with a paper towel or even your finger and wipe that extra chalk away. I love using that chalk, it makes things a lot easier. I'm just making sure my lines are nice and defined. <laughs> you can put a little bit of purple on his chest there if you want to make it look like it has a, a little bit of depth to it, a little bit of shadow on there, but that's up to you. A little bit of purple there just to kind of highlight some, some accents. All right, I don't wanna overthink that one. Let's, let's talk about these vines. So we want to make sure that we have that liquid black like I was talking about. And I'm, I'm looking at my reference photo and I'm just kind of getting some ideas. I'm not gonna do all of them. I am gonna do just a few, just to give it a little bit of extra oomph as far as details. So I'm going through, I'm like making the black lines, but that's not what's gonna make this really pop. We just wanna get some of these vines in here. You might not even see it at this bottom lower section. Yeah, you can, okay, that'll work really good. Maybe a couple there. Okay, once our vines have been laid down, 
then you take that bright purple, make sure it's liquid as well, make sure there's some, some water in there. And we're gonna go right next to that same line we made, just to the right. And boom, now we have a vine where it's lit up, but it also has a shadow already created. It's a cool little trick. And that just adds a little bit extra detail to our pumpkin patch here in the graveyard. I feel like with the vines, less is more here too. You can do a lot if you wanna get really creative and fun, but just remember it's a black line right next to a purple line. Boom. And that's how you get cool little vines. And I think that's it. And now we have our finished product. Man, those are some good looking pumpkins. Hey, if you were painting along with me, I really hope you had a fantastic time and I hope you love what you see right in front of you. If you were just checking us out to watch it, thanks for tuning in, we appreciate it as well. Please share, subscribe, smash that like button. Give us some love in the comments, let us know you're out there. So whether you were watching from your bed or on the toilet, I really sincerely wanna thank you for checking us out. I'm Misto James and we will see you next time.